Oh, baby! Another one in the books. Another game in the books. What is up, everybody? And welcome into the DMVR Nuggets podcast. <laughs> and always by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Use promo code DMVR whenever you sign up. And vote along with Harrison Wind, who somehow gets the luckiest bets of his life. Every single time, I don't know how it works. Serbia gets the win. Team Serbia over the Czech Republic. Was it pretty? Uh, at times, it was. Not the entire game, but they get a win, 81-68 over the Czech Republic. I would say a comfortable win, um, if not convincing. And we're going to break all of that down as well as power rank our favorite players. We're we're new to this. We This power ranking might be shameful. It might be so bad. But we're going to just give it based on our like five or six games of Team Serbia that we've watched so far. To help me do that, I got the referee himself, Brennan Vogt. This is from Zara, man. You're killing me. I like this shirt. How are you, man? I'm feeling good. I set an alarm to watch international basketball. I figured it's only right. We said this would go mutual. And we know they set alarms over there to watch the Nuggets. It's a little different. I, but hold on. An alarm? The game was 9.30. To watch the earlier games, too. Oh, uh, oh, okay, okay. I All was right. up. I was I, watching. I also, I you know how I live, man. 9.30 on a Saturday. That's practically 24 hours off. Wait. Whatever. Uh, it's funny because, yeah, like you don't have kids. Like 9.30, that's like, I mean, it's almost lunch at that point when, when you have kids. So, um, But, yeah, so you got up. You watched the early game. You watched Bosnia. I did. I caught the second. Well, I caught, I caught the second the half, too. Half, That's all I caught. And then parts of the second half. Yeah. Germany is really good, man. And I know <laughs> our our folks on – I mean, that's not a huge surprise. The folks on the Serbian corner uh, were, were telling us about that. But I've been yeah, surprised okay. at how well they've executed and played so far. That's a team to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah. Uh, just a little quick a housekeeping notes. You know, I see some people calling for Dev. Dev likes Team Serbia. Dev doesn't like coming on the show if he doesn't have to. So Dev, yeah, Dev taking his Saturday. Dev, <laughs> Dev takes work Saturday. life balance. That's what Dev likes. <laughs> Dev likes work life balance. Uh, Eric, no work life balance. Always working like an absolute dog, and he's working on some stuff. But he will be back on the show next week. So you guys are stuck with me and vote. Harrison, undisclosed location. Should we get into the fast recap? Make it the fastest recap in the West, bro. Let's do it. I can't. I'm gonna. I just want to share all these notes. All right. To get into the recap in the game, I know not everybody watched. Although these are on ESPN Plus, the ball was popping early. I gotta say, this was a very good ball is popping game. But the shots just didn't go down. Like yeah. Serbia was not shooting the ball well, and I think it disguised how beautifully they were playing, especially in the first half. Uh, like in the part where they were, you know, more focused. I thought. Uh, I almost made a statement. I didn't. I. I, I I almost said something I didn't actually fully believe, and I'll come back to what that was here in a okay. little bit. Jokic was dwarfed by Balvin. That guy was enormous, man. Jokic is rarely dwarfed. That dude, I looked him up. He's only seven foot one, but didn't he look like he was like seven four? He was huge. Feels bigger. He was a big seven one, Adam, which is a tough, <laughs> a a hard thing to say, but he is. He also like has the. I mean, he has the look of like just a big like hairy beast of a player doesn't he like the bald with long hair you don't see that too often no that Chris guy Damon. that guy is uh, a euro basket niche hero you know he's got all the ingredients to be someone's favorite <laughs> player going forward uh he did not enjoy his time <laughs> today i don't think he was very frustrated with Jokic. um Jokic hit a three right off the bat though which i mean i talked about this yesterday that's always big for me when he takes one with confidence and in rhythm knocked one down early um, his defense, though, remains bad, as does his his rebounding. And I think, to me, it's the biggest sign. Like, I thought Jokic came out aggressive again offensively. They built a lead. The biggest sign, there's two of them. One is how they're playing. I'll get to that later. And number two is Jokic just not rebounding. Those are the two signs to me of, like, okay, they're in cruise control mode, and rightfully so. It's a little bit of the gamesmanship. Um. He went Hulk mode inside on offense, though, just like too big for all of these guys, too mobile. It's so mm -hmm. funny to watch him play against a guy like Balvin, who's I'm sure a good European league, Euro League player or what have you, you know, good relative to playing for Czech Republic or what have you. But he is like horrible against Yoke, and Yoke just makes him look silly. Um, and this is the funniest part, vote. Jokic played all 10 minutes of the first quarter, and it's like, wow, that was a long stint. And then he comes back in in the second quarter and plays two more minutes. Now, it's not that many minutes, 12 minutes. He does that in the NBA. He'll play the whole first quarter sometimes. But it just was such a funny thing to be like, oh, he's back on the court. I did not expect it. 
I don't know if you're picking up on this. I don't think rotations are really a thing here at Hero Basket. <laughs> I think there's not really a set you go here now. It doesn't look that way. I love it's so funny, man. It is like almost you coach a little bit more on vibes in Serbia, which I love yeah. in, in, in Eurobasket, which I, I'm support, all for. We support vibes here. Uh, he had 11 points, four rebounds, one assist in his first stint. He plays with two more minutes of the second quarter, and I think he gets up to 13 points, five rebounds, two assists. So he's off to a very good start. I mean, more points than minutes, plus those assists and everything and, and rebounds. Um, so it was good. And then that's when the, the lead really ballooned. And maybe this is the genius of Coach Pesic. He goes, they had an okay first quarter. They had an okay, the ball was popping. They weren't making shots. They're up four points, I think, going into the quarter. He brings Jokic back, and that was a sledgehammer. It broke the game open to 14 points, and it was like they never looked back, really. Um, and then it was 50. Then even when he went to the bench, Serbian bench comes in and had a fantastic stint. Jokic done for the, the half, by the way. He comes in, plays 12 minutes straight, doesn't play again. Um, but the balloon, or the lead ballooned up, I think, all the way to 20 points, and Serbia was just clamping check. They had zero field goals in the first i think eight minutes of that quarter it was it was wild how much serbia really clamped in and then micic running that second unit i thought there was great d offense a little clunky but they made enough of a run and they're 43 25 lead at the half so 18 point lead at the half so what do you think comes next vote when you're up 18 at an easy game that you could win in your sleep how do you think uh Jokic and team serbia stormed out of the third quarter <laughs> Well, let's see. Where else have I watched Jokic play? In Denver. How do we feel about third quarters in Denver? They go both ways, but uh, usually not the way we want them to go. Super lazy third. I thought Jokic, one of my big notes here is that he's playing almost exclusively out on the perimeter these first two games. And like some people have like replied. I, I put this out on Twitter. I was like, hey, I think it's a strategic decision. And people are like, hey, Captain Obvious, thanks for your insight on your basket. Thanks, guys. First time, first time commenter. <laughs> getting, getting my feet wet out here. People, you, you stupid mother. You idiot. Like, yeah. Like I'm just making a comment. I'm sorry if it was audio. My audience is largely American. I'm helping them along here, guys, because you know people are going to be like, why is Jokic not posting up? Why is sure. he not doing this? Sure. Jokic playing a very perimeter-oriented game. Now, a couple things. Number one, I think you don't want to show your hand too much. Like You probably have some things you feel more confident in. He's inside in the first quarter. I mean, that's why he's scoring all his points. But quarters two, three, and four, he's out on the perimeter a lot more. Really not like attacking the basket, not jumping for rebounds, not contesting a lot of shots, to be honest, inside. Like he just defensively, he's on eco mode. And then I think also, so it's pre preserve his energy, preserve his health, not show your hand too much, all of those things. And then also maybe just to work some different options, like get <clears throat> other guys going and this or that. So well, I say all that to say Jokic had a good game, but I feel like he didn't have a great game in large part by design. Yes, I agree with that. And then also at some point, like they're, you know, they had two bigs in the first half with Vesely in there for Czech Republic. So I think that probably played into it as well of like, yeah, he could have just overpowered them every time. But I think you're right about getting different looks going. They like uh, Kalinic in the low post. I've noticed that varying degrees of success today. But I think Jokic drawing some bigs out and, and maybe looking towards other mismatches is something they're comfortable doing. The eco mode comment in the in the comments is perfect. I do. Jokic is playing well, but. It does seem like he's sort of reserving a fourth and fifth gear here that he's only busting it into when he needs it, you know? No question about it. Um, and then I thought Lucic has been struggling a little bit, my guy. Oh, I have a note in here. I was making fun of the Rico Hines runs and how like mm -hmm. lazy they were. And, and then we watched Serbia Greece up close and how intense it was. These last two games, Closer to Rico Hines runs, I would say, than the World Cup qualifier. I bet I bet Worthy de Young would look sick at a Rico Hines <laughs> run. So I think he would, he would. He'd be crushing it at the Rico Hines runs. Uh, Lucic struggling. The game did feel over, though. Micic did a great job with that second unit. Uh, it felt like it was over. They're up, I think, 20 or 21. And then Czech closes the quarter on a 7-0 run, cut the lead to 14, and it was like – Dang it, we're going to have to have a serious fourth quarter or some something of a serious four, fourth quarter. And then they started making a run to start the fourth as well. Micic called things down. Again, I think he's been so clutch in this yep. uh, in these first two games. Not clutch as in at the last moment, but at the moments in the game when you're like, okay, other teams on a little 5-0, 7-0 run, what do you go to here? And Micic has had the right answers in those moments uh, over the last two games. So it's very encouraging. Um, Ristich had a few big buckets too. I have to give a shout out to him. Uh, because he had a couple like post-ups or, or jump hooks or just finishes off of plays that I was like, 
that came right on time as well, where you're like, hey, if you miss this one, game maybe gets a little Great more point. interesting. Yeah. And he just kept coming through on those. So I got to give a shout out to him because I don't think we've even mentioned his name mm -hmm. so far. Jokic came back in with six minutes, six and a half minutes, up 12. Um, and kind of unnoteworthy other than this. When the push came to shove, I think it got to like eight points or nine points. Jokic went inside. They had like a big possession where it's like, let's see what happened. He went inside and guess what they got, vote? A little jump hook, dump off pass for a wide open layup. Like he drew the double team perfectly, dropped it off, and it was a wide open, nobody around layup. And it was so easy that it made me, that it was like, again, I'm being Captain Obvious here. It was like, they know they can go to Jokic in the post. Yes. And they're not going to it deliberately because if you do, you get literal wide open layups or Jokic jump hooks, both of which are going to score almost every time. So that pass was insane. The pass was one thing the comments have done a, a great job of, of reminding me is the condensed schedule here and yeah. how you're just, there's a lot of playing. So if you don't have to grind away and just mash your best player button, that's a luxury. And this team doesn't have to. And um, by the way, this is because this tournament is so short. It's makes logical sense for us to say part of the str to, the strategy of EuroBasket is this pacing yourself, not showing your best hands, whatever. But when we talk about an NBA schedule, eighty-two games, everyone wants to reduce it, reduce it down to sixty games or fifty, so we never play a back-to-back. -back. I've always looked at it and said, look, the point of the NBA's eighty-two game season is that. You have to be strategic there as well. You can't play your guys. Some teams, like Tibbs teams, always did this. They'd play their guys so many minutes early, and they'd look great early, and then they'd fade away at the back half of the season. We, If we just said, hey, over two weeks, Jokic is going to sit long stretches. He's not going to play in the post to wear himself out. We understand it. But over an 82 game, it's the exact same thing. And I don't, I don't to me, I don't hate that necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um and then the timing on the game-winning assist or game-clinching assist I just thought was so great. We see Jokic do this. He has, of all of his talents, we talk about the touch, we talk about the vision, all these things. An underrated talent is that he has a supreme sense of timing. And uh, even like with the shot clock, you know, there's like, I don't even think it's conscious, like a thing that's yeah. in his head where he's like four, three, two. Like it's not that, he just feels the time. It's like in his brain, he has a natural you know, shot clock rhythm in his head. So when he makes passes like that one, it reminded me of the one to Monte Morris. I believe it was right before the All-Star break where he delivers it. It looks like it was too late. And instead it gets to Monte's hands right at the right time. So when he shoots it, it goes in, leaves his fingertips. Same thing happened today. Skip pass. I thought he held it too long. Me too. Nope. nope. He held it just long enough for the double to come before he sends it over there. Right off the fingertips, perfect time. And I swear to God, that guy, he has a, he has a metronome in his head. Yeah, it, I think you're right. It's it does seem more intuition, right, than like photographic memory type of deal for him. Totally. Uh, that that's my read on it. Anyway, and again, another shout out by the way to Marinkovic who hit that shot three of five from deep today. Oh. I've heard he's streaky. Well, he's on right now. Great start to him for for group play. Uh, yeah. That's a guy who, again, he's in my circle of trust right now for sure. Is he climbing up your power rankings, your own Serbian national team power rankings? You can say, you can we'll say he might be one of my guys, but I don't he want might. to get ahead of myself. Yeah, he for sure might be one of them. Um, just kind of rounding out. So so this game, the other – well, actually, I'll, I'll ask this. What's your big takeaway from this game, Th this one specifically, this isolated game? Well, we saw – you and I both called for intense defense and better ball movement. And we saw it in the first half in abundance. I, they didn't get rewarded for it necessarily. They I agree. Didn't hit those shots, um, but I thought that they, I thought that they showed that they could do those things at a really high level. And that twenty point lead actually almost felt a little small to me. So there's a little bit of a Nuggets thing going on with this team. I don't know if we'll see complete four quarter, uh, you know, shutouts, but I think. They can turn. They can turn on the faucet on both ends of the floor when they need to. So I was more encouraged than discouraged today. That's what's so weird about EuroBasket and these pool play games is one, you're not running your best stuff, and two, it's so hard to be intense. When I mean, look, you knew that Serbia was going to win this game. I never really right. thought they weren't going to, and it was one of those things where in both games Serbia's come out and looked great in the first quarter, in the other ones even second quarter, whatever. In this one, the first half, they're up twenty mm -hmm. points. And you're just like, okay, this is easy. And then when they don't look good in the second half, you just go, 
does that matter? And I think my answer is not at all. It doesn't actually matter at all. It's part of the gamesmanship. It's part of the, the strategy of Eurobasket. That, not that you want to look bad. It's just that you don't care. You would rather not show your hand than look good. And that's the thing for me. But I am with you. I'm encouraged by the ball movement when they're locked in early on in the games. And I'm encouraged by the defense. Yeah, I agree with that. And then just lastly, a team like Czech Republic with the way this works with qualifying, they're going to score. They're going to play to the very last second, right? So a run is not all for not uh, with, with the way points matter if they matter. So every team's going to try to the last second. Uh, they lost a big game to Poland, so they were going to make a run at some point. And I just think Serbia, I, I think we feel comfortable and Team Serbia feels comfortable with a card that's in their back pocket that they're in no they're in no rush to play it. I do the one thing I will say they got the easiest bracket, the re- easiest group by far, I think. Yeah. I there's, there's not really good teams. In Finland, Israel, maybe they'll they'll make them work a little bit more even than Czechted. But part of me wonders if it's good or bad that they got such an easy group. I think you want one other contender because if you think of a team like Slovenia who's going to be have played a lot of your top teams by the time they get there, if they go through and win all of those they're battle tested. I think it's going to be very hard if the competition stays at this level, which I kind of think it will in group play, for them to be battle tested. So they're going to go straight from just smacking everyone. And I think they play the third placed B group team, which might be France. They might go up against France in the first or Lithuania right out of the gate. And the jump from Czech Republic to Lithuania or France to me is really big. And that's, that's one of point. the things I look at that how do you manufacture like clutch time when you're going up against teams that have no business being in clutch time with you. That's a really good point. And that grace game felt like it was at a level of intensity as a world cup qualifier that these games didn't even sniff in terms of what it drew out of team Serbia. So maybe there will be some value in, uh, I guess, playing those guys more than, than you would like to in a vacuum, you know, maybe they do need to just start, uh, leaving them out there to, to battle through some runs and stuff, even if they feel confident in the long-term outcome. I don't know, but I think you're right. It's a hard thing to to simulate. Chat seems to be in agreement. They're not super comfortable with that dynamic either. So right. It's an interesting it'll be an interesting. It'll definitely be an interesting one for them. My last notes on this game, I really hope we get to see the fully activated. I hope Serbia qualifies for the World Cup. I So for people that don't know, Serbia won the two games this year that were important, Greece and Turkey, to qualify. Now they need to win two of their last three, but the problem is it'll be played by guys that are basically not professionals. It's so dumb. This happens, by the way, for all teams across the globe. FIBA just really shoots themselves in their own balls so for this for, for no reason by making it impossible because I, we're not sure if Serbia will qualify. That's a long way of saying this. I hope they do because if they do and you get to see Jokic – and some of the other you know, Bogdanovic and, and, and this team kind of comes together and gels even more. To me, it's a great story and it just would be so much fun. And I'm like, we talked about this last week on some of our recap of our Serbia trip. But it's one of the surprising things to me of the trip is I'm like, I'm not as invested as I am for the Nuggets. I don't think I can be, but I'm way more invested than I expected in terms of like, I really want those goals. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, like Eurobasket's huge. I think yeah. talking to some of our guys like Eurobasket to a lot of Serbian people because of the history and the 95 team and some of the other like iconic teams, Eurobasket was the biggest moments. But I would like a World Cup one too because that's the one that involves the Americans and involves, you know, like some of this other stuff. So part of me, I really hope they qualify. That was one of my thoughts watching this team is I'm like, they move the ball well and they're one Bogdanovic away from being like really interesting. And a key player off the bench who didn't play today. And depending on how you feel, Bielitsa and Boban, or how you view them. I mean, this is, yeah, it would be awesome. It'd be a treat to watch this team at full strength. But I was yeah. thinking that about Bielitsa because I've really liked some of the other players that are on this roster that would fill that role, you know, some of those spots. He's one, I mean, I like him. He's a good player. So, of course. But to me, I'm almost like, I'm just more interested in Bogdanovich. I just keep watching this and going, man, if Bogdanovich was here, this team would be so fun i don't they'd be good but they'd be so fun right no i agree but this team you know it's funny i was sitting down my girlfriend's little brother's upstairs he's like oh is it just Jokic? is this is it just Jokic?" and i'm like you know in terms of names you've heard sure yeah um but no like these guys can play man these guys can play and it's been really fun watching them so far i do i do feel like there's another level just in terms of the shot making hasn't been up to par you know even right. through the quality plays they've made. So I'm excited to, to watch this team continue playing. I think they've got a couple more gears to go for sure. 
Let's uh, take a quick break. And then, oh, by the way, I, mean, I wanted to mention Jovic and Poku as well. Like, I don't know where those guys fit in. They're kind of would be the young pups next year, but still, it'd be fun to see them out there just as, as you know, role players. Let's take a break. On the other side, we're a couple games into this. We're going to power rank our favorite players on Team Serbia now that we've had a, a chance to kind of digest a few games. Which one's not the best? The ones that we just kind of like the most. We'll do Who that. Who are we vibing with, Adam? Who are we vibing with? Yeah. You know we vibe with Ivaka TV because they're the new yeah. in Colorado sports. They got us to Serbia. And they got the Nuggets and the Az back on your television in Denver. This service is available in Denver, Colorado Springs. And right now, Colorado sports fans can get $10 off their first three months. Uh, $10 off per month for the first three months with Ivaka TV. It's only $25 a month plus a $5 receiver fee. But here's the deal. You're going to get live games, which are distressingly hard to watch in Denver. And you're going to get exclusive content like our Serbia doc and other DNVR content. So check out Ivaka TV. This is where your Denver sports, their Colorado sports is living these days. It's all moving towards Ivaka. So get yourself involved. Go to Ivaka.tv slash Colorado 10. That's Ivaka.tv slash Colorado 10. And what else are we talking about today, Adam? We are talking about DraftKings Sportsbook. Oh, no, we're talking about Athletic Greens. Okay, I love Athletic Greens. It's how I started my day today. Coffee is important. Athletic Greens is more important with just 12 ounces of cold water and one scoop of this delicious Athletic Greens formula. I get everything I need. I get 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, so, uh, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's the ultimate daily nutritional insurance, and right now you can get it. Athletic Greens is making it easy by giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash nuggets. That's athleticgreens.com slash nuggets and take ownership over your health and pick up that ultimate daily nutritional insurance today. Love it. Back here, segment two. For segment three, I want to do a mailbag. Um, so if you guys have any questions about us about Eurobasket, it could be about the Nuggets as well, but probably about Eurobasket, uh, put them in the chat. Super producer Kale is going to be combing through the chat looking for good questions, and then he will uh, star those and we'll get to them in segment three. But segment two, vote. We've got a couple games under a belt. I would say I'm pretty familiar now with most of the uh, Serbian players. I, I, this list is probably going to change, but I thought it'd be fun to power rank our favorite players on the Serbian national team. Number one, I'll give mine first. I'll let you give your list and I'll react to it, but I'm going to give you number one, Nikola Jokic. That's an interesting pick. It's a bold pick. I mean, I don't know if you know, he's actually not the greatest Serbian basketball player of all time, <laughs> but he is the best player. Hey, man, I understand it though. I'm telling you like, this, I, mean, I, I get it. Now. I, I totally I get it. Now. I, that's why we want these goals, man, because we that, want him to be that actually but he is, is number one in this exercise. Of course, of course. You're so, you're so right, man. Like that is a big part of the motivation is like, I want you. Know, he's number one in our hearts. He's number one nugget. It'd be fun. We need him to be the undisputed number one serve as well. Yeah. I agree with that. So, all right. Number two, though. Here's here's an interesting one. It's you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, it's Mitsic, right? Mitsic? Me no, Mitsic? So this is your favorite. This is your own personal power. Remember, this is not best. This okay. is just your personal yeah. well, I'm favorite. I'm still going to give it to him. He's a baller. And those okay. Shots Rasa Mitsic. He, he would be for me, too, man. He has been a baller. He's been really fun. Oh, look at that, Gil. <laughs> a website. Um. He's he's really impressed. I don't know that he would have been my number two Ooh. a week ago, but these last two games, man, he's really shown me uh, so much. And um, the fa fancy passes. By the way, I got to give Jokic a shout for that behind the back pass that he had today. Oh yeah, I, the shot didn't get uh, the guy wasn't ready for it. He could have had a layup. Then he yeah. like fumbled the pass. Then he kicked it out for a wide open three. I think it was Lucic couldn't complete the play. So sad. So sad. Uh, all right, Micic number two, number three. Kalinich for me, man. I'm 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 a huge fan. I knew he was going to be your guy. I'm a huge fan. He didn't really have a great game today, but ten I just, points, two of five shooting, one of four from three. He was off from three a little bit. It wasn't a terrible game either. I just yeah. love the way he plays. He seems to be in a Jokic circle of trust as well. Um, I like the little low post mismatch he likes, but he's a, a saucy passer too, a tertiary playmaker. And any playmaker who allows me an excuse to say the word tertiary. Is dear in my heart. He is a, like it seems like a Jokic ball player. I mean, you know, knocks down shots when he's open, but just like has size, six foot eight. Like he's got good size. Um, can do some things. 
So Kalinich, Kale, do, do you have the? Uh, yeah, he's, I know these are hard because you have to like do the the spelling. Yeah, you have to like look them up everything. So this is tough for you. All right, who do you have number four? I think, by the way, I'm probably with you so far. I hate to say it, but I'm probably with you so far. And then uh, four, not a great game today, but I still like Lucic. I'm a still I'm still a big fan. I do too. It's been a couple games in a row now for me with Lucic where he's kind of been like just a not bad. He's still a solid guy, but just not making his plays, make, finishing. He had a couple layups today that were like you finish those, the game gets wide open, and he just didn't have it. So he's been a little frustrating. He's been a little frustrated. Did He got a tech today, didn't he? I think oh, he got a tech. Man. I don't remember. Man, I don't I don't remember. Catch that. All right. Vladimir Lucic, he's still, he's still my guy there. All right. Who's next for you? I, our Vladimir. lists are identical so far. Shooting up my board, shooting up my board, and and possibly I may have, I may have shorted him already. Can we get Marinkovic up there? I knew that was gonna be your guy. I knew that was gonna be your guy. I mean, he has on. been dope. He's nails. He's nails. Can I say this is a weird thing? Where this is like the Serbs watching this are gonna be like, you guys are analyzing this like such Americans. Because here's what I'm gonna say: He's got a great look. He does have a great look. No, he has I a agree. Great look. I agree. He's a Euro basket baller. I mean, yeah. He, He's fun to watch. He's been, he's kind of come up big. Um, you know, he had 11 points today, went three of five from the three point line. Like Marinkovic and, and uh, Kalinic kind of fill similar roles in that they're off. And Lucic, too, to be honest, like they're kind of like the secondary guys that need to finish <coughs> plays and what have sure. you. And I think you know what they are. You know what they are? They're like, um, they're, they're not as athletic, but they're like Aaron Gordon's out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, I, I like this. Militinov is still on the board, and he was the next guy on my list. Is there anybody that you would have above Militinov? No, and and you know if we could see more of him, he might even be higher. You know, I definitely. I think understand. he probably was higher after the late Greece game. He had a great, yeah. great game against Greece. I definitely understand him as integral to this team, but personally, I haven't seen a ton of him. But I understand, like spiritually, I'm in line with him being here. Like I see, I see it. So yeah. he's good, good for me at six. I think he might be a guy that definitely climbs up our our ladders going forward. Although I think is it Ristich that's Ristich that's been filling in for him, and he's been I think he's been solid as I mentioned. He was he good in the second bucket. half. Yeah, tonight he was yeah. really good tonight. I thought. Now it gets tough. Now it gets tough. Who's number seven? Yeah, this is where I'm really reaching with my analysis. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Um, no way. There's still one guy I know you're gonna have. You, you should have. Well, Yarmaz. Here's here's the thing about Yarmaz. <laughs> Are we sure he's? Are we sure he's really good? We'll find out. He was so good in that Greece game. We may have tuned into his peak. Like we may have tuned into the Yarmaz game, and we're forever we're forever tainted. But maybe he's good. I don't. I'm joking about a player I know little about. Here, here's the thing about him. He was not just good. He was dope. Right. Like some of these guys have been good, but you wouldn't call them like you know sexy or whatever like the things right. his his good was really sexy and even in the last game he wasn't great but he had the one step back crossover step back right austin rivers-esque i guess <laughs> little kevin <laughs> herter to his game how about that a little kevin herter oh my. we're gonna do the thing we only comp it white guys to white guys we're gonna That's do that right. one um all right yeah now it gets really really tough i do have names here but i'm I, but it's your list i gotta i gotta hear yours so oh, far man. i think I'm... we're the same militinov and marinkovic i might have swapped but Whatever, it's hard to say. All right, who do you have next? This is where it gets really tough. Yeah, this is where I'm I'm reaching. Um, uh, <laughs> I uh, have mine. Mine is like a, I, I feel confident. This is my next guy. Oh, he played well today. I'm gonna butcher his name, and I'm really sorry. Uh, Guterich. Yeah, Guterich? Marco Guterich. That's Guterich. Me, the easy next guy here, in large part because this is the like tough the tough bin. We haven't seen a lot from these guys, but I'm with you. Guterich was good today, man. He was. He was a good player. He looked impressive. One of five from three. Had one of every stat. Eight points. Not I'm looking at the stat line. It wasn't good, but I remember like writing his name down and saying, "Hey, he's kind of impressing me here." <laughs> okay, get now. We're in the the toughest part. Where do you go now? You've uh -oh. got Netovic, Ristich, D Davidovic, and man, I don't even know this guy. Yagadich Kuridza. I don't think I've seen Okay, him. I was going to go with Yagadich Kuridza because he's 35, and as I understand oh, it... Oh, is this the bald guy? <laughs> as I understand it, this is his first run with the national team. So, Oh, really? And I thought he was out there playing defense, moving Oh, his no, feet. this is a different guy. This is a different guy. Yeah. Oh, it okay. is? Yeah, is that, yeah. 
Hold on. Let's we gotta find out which is the bald one. Serbia will help me out. Serbia will help me oh, out. Oh, it's David Avich is the is the bald one. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm talking he's about only 27. Uh, no, he's only 27. No, I'm talking about Marco though. Okay. Yeah, he's 35. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I under I, our guy Voya tells me this is his first time on the uh on the national team. So I'm rooting that, for him. That is cool. That is kind of a cool story. All right, I'll give him a I'll give him a few bonus, but I don't really have a, a connection to any of these last guys. So I don't yeah, really I'm really play. reaching. I'm really reaching. All right, so now you have to choose. Oh man, somebody's not going to make your list. You got Restitch, who's been filling in. You've got Davidovich, who Jokic cursed out that one time on the bench, and then you got Netovich to choose from, who I don't really have any point of reference to Netovich. Yeah, I'm going to go with Davidovich. I know the stonks are down <laughs> right now. I know the stonks are down, but Davidovich, Davidovich, Davidovich. Okay. Thank you, Thank Davidovich. You. Or Davidovac. Oh, there's no itch. Oh, man, this is tough. Davidovac. Damn it. This is tough. Yeah. I'm trying. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's an AC. All right. Yep. Davidovac. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Um, so you're going there. I would have gone with Ristich just for today. Um, hey, he was big. Be, I thought he came up big today. Yeah. So Coach Pesic, to me, would go number two. I don't know why. Just a big fan, man. I'm a big fan of Coach Pesic. I'm a big fan of how this team is playing. So I guess that's part. That's probably I'm giving him all of the credit for that. Plus, as I'm doing my research, he's just involved in, in some really interesting stories and moments, and, and so I kind of have a, that connection to him. And then Bogdan Bogdanovic would be right there as well. He would also be, for me, probably ahead of Micic. I'm a big Bogdan Bogdanovic fan. Yeah, of course. He's Are you? Hard not to be. Yeah, of course. Man. Some people say I look like him. Yeah, I, you you do, actually. A little bit? Just a yeah, tiny amount? Yeah, uh, also, I've talked with him. He was so, he was so nice. He was so interesting, and 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 I always appreciate that. But I like his game. I mean, we've all long said we'd love him to be a Nugget, Bogdanovich. It's like in the NBA, we've talked about this a lot. Denver's offense is great. It would be greater with him, but they need the defense. And I'm not sure if he was a guy that fits, you know, Jamal Murray and him as a backcourt. I I don't know if that's like a championship um, script. But nonetheless, I really like him, and and it would be a lot of fun. So you wish he wasn't so good because then you could get him as a role player, you know, maybe as a backup or something. But he's too good for that. He's a starter in the league, so yeah, you do what you got to do. Um, any other thoughts here on the list? Vote or or well, the thing about Pesic is, I I really love. We're NBA fans. We're starved for this. I love when a head coach talks and all the players listen. You know. Yeah. I just, he clearly, if he pulls you aside, people are making eye contact and they're listening and they're engaged in that huddle, which may not be anything strange or new to European basketball fans, but doesn't always happen on our side of the pond. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would say, the gameplay in FIBA is just so smooth, man. Like the lack of timeouts, the lack yes. of just like interruptions has really been nice. Like, have, have you noticed they don't go to break on every stoppage either? Yeah. And like, and maybe that's just the ESPN Plus thing. I don't know. But I have felt the flow of the broadcast and the game to be super enjoyable. Super enjoyable. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. On the other side, send your questions. And you got one more timeout here to send us your questions that you have for us on Eurobasket, our perspective, the Denver Nuggets, whatever it is. Send them in. We'll get to those on the other side. One thing that's super cool about DraftKings Sportsbook is it's America's top-rated sportsbook. The other thing that's really cool about it is it's an official – sports betting partner of the NFL. The third thing that's really cool about it is right now new users can get $200 in free bets instantly when they download the app and they place a bet of $5 or more. And if you want even more action for opening night of the NFL football season, everyone can experience the thrill of this early win promotion. If the team you bet on gets up seven, you win even if they lose. Nice and easy. Making money is super, super cool. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code DNBR to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code DNBR. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Got to be 21 or older. Colorado only. Restrictions apply. Uh, you can see all of the terms at DraftKings.com slash football, the eligibility and the terms. If you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-470. Zero. Also got to talk about our friends at Colorado Golf Association because they've got a nice little uh, setup for you here. You can join over 70,000 golfers with the Colorado Golf Association today and receive a USGA handicap with worldwide access to score posting and GPS tracking. 
People really love golf. Membership means more at the CGA, and members get the opportunity to play at exclusive courses around the state, such as Aspen Glen Club, uh, the club at Ravina, the Pinery, and more. So learn more about Colorado Golf Association today by visiting coloradogolf.org. Use code DNVR5. That's DNVR5 to get $5 off your membership. Back here, segment three, DMVR Nuggets podcast. Don't forget, we have a lot of new listeners. I know if you never catch one of our live shows for whatever reason, we're also a podcast that you can get on any podcast platform, the DMVR Nuggets podcast. This audio goes right into the feed so you can listen while you're at work, on your way to work, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and if you haven't already, leave us a rating and review. If you guys are enjoying the show, leave us a rating and review on Apple uh, Podcasts. We always appreciate those. Um, some news and notes from around Eurobasket. Team I'll go France. around the Euro? A little around the Euro? Should we go around the Euro? Why not? <laughs> France gets the win over Lithuania, 77-73. Lithuania drops to 0-2, so they might be that team. I, th I think uh, Serbia would end up matching up with, with them if they're the third seed in that pool play. But it was a close one, 77-73. I didn't get to catch this game, but do you have any thoughts just on the, uh, the final score here? Uh, surprised. I thought Lithuania was going to take this one, but I... One emerging theme for me is I think as we'll see matchups vary, but but just day to day, these scores could vary a lot. And these results, it's going to be hard to string together an emerging narrative because I think you're going to see surprising results from day to day. So uh, just just an interesting one. Tough start for Lithuania. They're a better team than Owen, too, but it's a tough group. That's the, the group of death for sure. But DeMontis Sabonis, six points today. Six points, nine rebounds, three assists. It's just... I thought the same thing in the first game with them. Like, he just didn't look good. He didn't look great. He's a great player. I really like Sabonis. I'm a huge fan, but he hasn't looked great. So, yeah, um, one of my takeaways there. I will say um, Rudy Gobert, only eight points, four rebounds. So, uh, Timberwolves legend, one of five from the field. He continues to look not so great. Our Timberwolves um, friends, media friends were tweeting, Gobert expanding and exploring his game at your own. Oh, no. oh, no. It's going just as well as it sounds. Ooh. Evan Fournier, by the way, was the hero of the game. 27 points. He was a plus 13, a game high plus 13, but 27 points on 9 of 20 shooting. So former Nuggets legend, uh, Evan Fournier, don't Google. He uh, He's stepping up. Um, what are some of the other games from around today? Montenegro beats Belgium. Finland dominates, dominates Poland. Finland, are they sneaky good? They are good. But again, this goes to my earlier point. They also lost to Israel. And Poland looked real good yesterday. So it's... I, you know, the, I think we're going to see some weird results here across a long and grueling uh, group play. Croatia beat up on Great Britain. Uh, Germany beat Bosnia. Germany's good, man. I love. We were talking about them. Franz Wagner, fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, he's a good player, man. He's a great player, he's, man. Fun he's a really, really good player. Uh, Turkey beats uh, Bulgaria, 101 to 87, uh, and then Ukraine beats Estonia by one, 74, 73. Kind of surprised by that one. Oh wow um and that does it right now georgia and spain are playing is that it oh no and then later on we got slovenia hungary mm -hmm. greece italy should be a good one so actually some good games still on the slate for today should be interesting all right let's get to our questions here today kale what do you have for i see we have 12 starred questions what do we got maxwell says adam vote do you think that micic can be a starter in some nba teams him as backup is given because he's right. He definitely could be a backup. The question is, could he be a starter? Um, I mean, he he moves different to me. Like, I think he's quick. He's crafty. He's confident with the ball. Like, physically, I think he can play at that level. Like, he's a smart player. The shot making at, the, at that level, I think, maybe would be. Because it's something he can do. That's uh, one of the differences, I think, between the NBA and FIBA. Like the team play, I just think is is more seamless and natural. Yeah, but the shot making in the NBA is pretty. There haven't. There's been some guys that have stood out, like the young, you know, the guys that have made some tough shots. But in the NBA, every team has a guy that's like you think about Michael Porter. Team play still working on it. Like still, still right. to be the. But that guy can make shots with a hand in his face from forty feet away regularly. Same with Jamal Murray and. Every team just seems to have one or two guys at that level, and if he's going to handle the ball, his gameplay wouldn't require a level of shot making that I haven't seen at in these games. It's sure. not that it's not it's there; I just yeah. haven't seen it. Also, because I think he would be a higher usage guy. Like if you have him, there's value in putting the ball in his hands and letting him do his thing. But to justify that, you have to see some shot making. So 
Absolutely on the table. I mean, he looks like an NBA caliber player to me. I, I feel confident saying that. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. I would say I just don't know yet. It's like on Sorry. the fence. That would be my official answer is I, it's on the fence. Could he be a starter? I mean, there's always a team you could be a starter for. Could he be a starter for like the Utah Jazz right now? Yeah, no question. Yeah, absolutely. But it, I don't think that's the question being asked. I think it's right. like on an average team, could he be a starter? I, I The defense is obviously going to be a tough part. Like he's going to have to guard De'Aaron Fox and mm -hmm. John Morant. And those guys, the best defenders in the NBA have a hard time with them. I just – he he really have to be really special to be in that role at the NBA, and I, I he's right on the cusp from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I'm with that. Definitely an NBA player, though. Yep. Um, what what's our next one? Question specific to Adam because I don't think vote watched the documentary. What did you think about 250 steps? You did watch it, didn't you? Vote, I did. No? But please, okay. by all means, so, take this one. Well, we can both answer give our give our kind of uh, perspective on it. I mean, I really loved it. I actually talked with the director. Um, I got set up with him just through a connection. And we've got to use that as a resource. It's a great story. I don't want to spoil it too much, although I encourage people to go and, and check it out. Um, one of the cool things about this trip and about the documentary, I don't want to give away too many things. I just see a lot of parallels. And maybe this is just me as a storyteller. Like there's not natural story like, parallels, but I'm finding them. You know, I'm finding the parallels between these stories. And I do see some parallels between that story and our story. Nice, Our story, yeah. I mean, us going to Serbia as well as our experience learning about Serbia and our experience with the Denver Nuggets and where they're at. So I see some parallels there. I thought it was a really good story. Um, and what I loved about the documentary specifically was it's such a great sports story, like basketball story. You don't, if that was an American story, there would have been more about the triumphance of the, you know, the game and this or that. And I felt like it was more about the process of the, of mm. that team. And that's what I liked about it is it was like, this is so much of what you remember most about sports aren't actually the games. They're just like the experience of being with the team and this or that. And that's what it was about to me. Mm. Yeah. We would probably make it like a glory road film or something starring right. Kevin Costner. No, I think the, the way I would say just if for our followers here in Denver, we went into this wanting to learn a lot about Jokic through the lens of the whole philosophy on Serbian basketball but we've ended up learning and enjoying so much more than just the Jokic part. And so I would just say, if you're interested in basketball stories from a different part of the world that extend beyond just the only way we've known it, this is worth your time. And if you're a sports fan, it's worth your time. Totally. Uh, what else we got? The Amber Sports. If you put Micic and Nuggets roster, who's going to get out to fill the spot? Um, it's a good question. Honestly, man, I don't know that he fits on the Denver Nuggets. I mean, we've talked about this. Denver doesn't need more offense. If he did, he would be on the bench. I think Denver with Jamal, he's not better than Jamal Murray. And, and that's who he would be. And that's who he would be trying to play. So then yeah. that means you put him alongside Jamal, and he's not a good fit alongside Jamal. So to me, it's obviously you send him to the bench. And then it's like, well, he's not going to replace Bones Highland. They're different players. You know, Bones is still on the come up. Um, but you're not going to replace Bones Highland there. So that means he's going to go alongside him. And does that work? Maybe. I mean, it works on offense, and maybe your your defense off the bench isn't as important. But obviously, Denver has looked at those other spots and said we need defense around the offensive players we already have, and Mitchich just doesn't provide that. So to me, I don't think he bumps anyone from the rotation, and I understand why Denver wasn't interested in bringing him in. Yeah, I agree. He that's what we were saying earlier. I think if you got him on your team, he's a high usage guy to try to extract the most value. But Denver has that guy who does it. At a, at a we know for a fact it does it at a high level so right what else we got here's a question which team do you think will give serbia most problems in their group i don't i mean look i know my limits on it on these i don't know <laughs> like i just honestly don't don't have a clue it sounds like it'll either be um israel or uh finland but i really i really couldn't tell you i'm, I'm not sure Po I, yeah, I, Poland Pol too. I mean, like Serbia is better than these teams, but these teams, yeah. there's a handful of teams who could absolutely give them trouble. Um, you know, if, if, especially if the like the total effort looks like it did in the second half or whatever. Noteworthy that every team in the group now has lost a game yeah. except for Serbia. So Serbia really is set up now. If they win their next two, that fifth game probably won't matter. So um, there's a good chance that that Serbia is going to be in really really good position to not have to strain themselves. Yeah. All right, guys. What would you say? Who is Euro Bart Basket Dark Horse? I have one. Do yeah. you? Let me hear yours. Uh, mine are uh, Israel and Poland. 
Well, that's in the group, but that you don't think they're going to win Eurobasket. Oh, I mean, I'm just trying to pick teams that aren't in like the top five. I just think like dark horse teams that could. Well, who are the top five to you then? Give it the top five. It might be nice. All right. Serbia, Germany. So Germany's in the top five to you. I think they have to be, man. They've, okay. they've looked that good. S- Slovenia, Lithuania. Even though they're off to a tough start. Slovenia, Turkey. Lithuania. Is France in there? I kind of can't figure France out. <laughs> they're one and one. If Lithuania is, then France has to be. They just beat them. So, and again, by the way, I'm talking out of my ass, right? Like I've watched Eurobasket for a week. I'm not. So Germany, if Germany is a dark horse, then that, that was going to be my pick. But I guess you're right. They're 2-0. and So maybe they're yeah, no longer I don't a think dark our, horse. I don't think our European friends are viewing them as a dark horse. I think they're they're a, a horse or whatever. They're just a regular horse. They're just a horse. <laughs> a <laughs> Palomino. Let us know what uh, you think in the chat. I'll say Germany. I'll say Germany is my – just because I didn't uh, – if you would ask me like two days ago, I would not have picked them to win it. And now I'm like – I don't think they're going to win it, but I'm like, that's a good team, man. It's a really good team. Mm-hmm. And then – oh, you've also, got Gre- you've also got Greece as one of the favorites. So if I said the favorites, Serbia, Greece, Slovenia, f- man, France probably still. France, Germany. Maybe Turkey that's maybe because they're in their pool. Yeah. So Germany sneaks in for me. Germany sneaks in. Okay. Yeah. So then Croatia. I'm going to go with Croatia. I'm with this. The good one. I like that one too. Yeah. I like that one. Oh, and there's Spain too. Shit. This is a good. This is going to be a good tournament, man. I know. This tournament's good. This is the thing, man. It's not like just throwaway talent with no good teams and right. no good players. There's like really good teams all over. And the tournament's been fun to watch. It's been really good. All right. What do we got so far? Vanya asks, question, are you expecting Jokic to have some takeaways from this experience with Pesic? And Team Serbia that he can bring back to Denver. Great freaking question, Vanya. Great question. Vote, I'll let you take a stab at it first. <sighs> I'm, I think this is your territory, man. I'm going I'm to I'm let you take this one. So I love this question because it's like front of my mind. And I can't wait to get to media day to sit and talk with Jokic. Probably the only time I'll get a, t- a chance to ask that. Because one of the things I want to – I've asked people, what do you think the main experience is of playing with po- Coach Pesic? And I'm curious to hear his answer on this, but one person who I respect a lot, Milos Jovanovic, he said, Pesic, he runs through the history of uh, basketball in Yugoslavia and Serbia. Like Pesic is part of that 250 steps back in 1987. He's he's coaching these guys, Vladi Divac, uh, Tony Kukoc. He's, he's, he's with those guys as, as they're just getting their formation. He's around the national team that you know the yugoslavia breaks up and i know he has to go to germany and do some other things but he's around the team for a lot of these big moments later on in the 90s and 2000s so one thing they said was i think that Jokic will probably come away from this experience with a more um clearer understanding of the importance of it and appreciation for it now it's probably wishful thinking right because we know how important it is to the people of serbia and do we know this in denver and we've kind of come to terms with it. Jokic doesn't value all the same things we value. And we're just thankful that he gives us what he gives us. Right. And like, he's not perfect in our eyes, like in that he gives us every little thing we want, but we understand he's his own person. So I think there's going to be some of that, but I do wonder if he walks away from that experience with a legendary coach who is, in my eyes, something of a poet. <laughs> like what I mean by that is, is he's like an artful coach. It, sure. it seems and so I wonder if he walks away with just a little bit more of feeling connected to the to the national team. I, I, that would be my sense. And then does he bring that over to Denver, feeling more connected to that? Like, hey, what I'm doing here really matters to a lot of people and maybe just a greater sense of that. And hey, let's all get together in this. I love that. I love that answer. I, and I would lastly, I would say it's way more natural, I think, for the for for European clubs. Serbian clubs specifically, and then the national team even more specific than that to play connected ball is pop in basketball. Yeah. And I just wonder if he walks away from this experience being like, no, I have to get our team to do this. Like it's on me. We, anybody can do it. I have to figure out how to get our team to do it to this level. That would be my guess. That would be the chef's kiss outcome for sure. Oh, it'd be if, that, if that team plays that way, it's, it's lights out. Totally. All right. What else we got? Luca says, do you think the higher attention EU basketball is getting will change something in the NBA game or rules? Mm. God, these questions are so good. That's a great what a question. Fire mailbag, Luca. Vote. Take this one first. I want to hear your opinion on it. I'm going to say no. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Um, whether it should or shouldn't, different yeah. question. But I I I'm going to say that's a much more delayed effect. But 
first of all, I, I want to answer his question, so I don't want to go on a too big of a tangent. Do you feel, I know you had this hypothesis that there's going to be more attention on it than ever. Do you, have you felt that so far? Not really. Yeah. Not really. I, I mean, I, I would say I feel it in our inner circle. Like I was talking to Matt Moore yesterday and he's like, to be honest, your guys' enthusiasm for this is contagious. So I, he's in, he's in on it. Right. I didn't see him tweeting about it today. Um, and I have, there have been little things like that. Maybe it's the group stage. Maybe I, I don't know, but I would say I haven't noticed a huge, like everybody tuning in, but guess what? These things swell. I didn't think it right. would, I didn't necessarily think it would be one day. And I will say this. I said something about skyrocketing. That was a bad word, but I do think that I do still, and I'll stand by it. I still think that people are going to be paying attention a little bit more to this than ever before. And as long as it is growing is a thing that people at the end of this are like, Hey, I'm glad I tuned in for that. And that was rewarding experience. Then I do think you build on it and build on it. And, and that's kind of what I think is going to happen here. I would love to see that. I'd love to see that, but I don't think we're going to see any sort of immediate reaction to this, particularly in the form of rules changes. Oh, oh, the rules changes one is great though. The NBA needs it. I, this is my hottest take: is the NBA needs it. I don't think they think they need it. They love right. Damian Lillard going for fifty-five points right. with twenty-two free throws. So they love that shit. But I do think that there are things that they could take from the international game. Here's what's funny: I hate FIBA the way I hate the NBA. Like I love basketball and I love NBA basketball and I love Eurobasket basketball. I hate FIBA. And I hate, the, and I just wish that they could work together in some more harmonious way, not necessarily to get all the rules on the same way. I don't mind there being little bit differences, you know, stylistic differences, but I do wish that we didn't have this stupid World Cup qualifying thing. Ridiculous. It's just so dumb. And I wish that, honestly, the teams that got invited into different tournaments, maybe you open up the pool, just some way to change it so we can get more teams in. The idea that good teams don't get to compete at the Olympics or in the right. World Cup is really, really dumb to me. Right. Also, the World Cup to me has not really gotten over. Like Eurobasket's a huge deal, but the world and the Olympics will. But I just the World Cup doesn't seem like it gets as much momentum as it should and attention as it should. And maybe a large part of it is just that, like because of the qualifying system is so bad, people almost treat it as an afterthought when it should be. Of but of course, a global exhibition and showcase. So right. All right. What else we got? Pavel says, I would love to hear your opinion on foreign players on national teams like Smith, Croatia, or Toby, Slovenia. For me, it misses the point of national competitions. <laughs> it's a great take. I agree. I, From the, the standpoint of the individual competitors, I don't want to dog anyone for like, hey, I'm eligible for citizenship. Like, I want to compete on that stage. Like, would, I mean, come on. We would all in a heartbeat if like, so, I mean, almost yeah. any country in the world asked me to play for it. I'd be like, hey, yeah, I've yeah. never even you been do. to. But I do. Sure. I, I love the way that's framed. I think it misses the point. It misses the spirit of what makes this competition great and international play great. And so I do I do feel the there is something when you see a team like, oh, wow, I didn't think they'd be in this game. And you check the box score and there's essentially a hired gun with 23 points. And you're like, all right, I don't, I don't know if the fan base can necessarily, you know, lean into that the way, the way team Serbia's fan base can. There's definitely exceptions. I know there's some players that have no connection, but they just have like played professionally in that country. And so then they get a citizenship just so they can play. To me, that goes too far. There are players that maybe have like a, an ancestry that goes one, like my father was from there. So I was sure. born with, dual citizenship like okay that to me is like the limit like you right. have dual citizenship that did not come just because you wanted to play for the national team i get it but i'm with you part of what's cool about doing this research project and going to serbia was learning about the through lines between serbia and you know going back to yugoslavia and this or that and i like it serbian coaches serbian players there's a connection like hey this guy is a coach now but he was a player for this team and that was his coach who was a player for that team it just feels very like it feels we talked about this when we were in Belgrade. It feels like an expression of basketball, that country's version of basketball. Sure. Like Serbia played Argentina had a style, Spain had a style, and it and Lithuania has a style, and it's cool. There's something cool about that. And the more hired guns, the more you kind of lose that. I mean, America has a style, like they bring a ton of athleticism, they full court press you, they don't play yep. that connected, but they beat you with shot making, defense, and athleticism. And it's like, hey, we all know that's their style of play. That's what they do. So 
Um, I, I that's cool. Also, what's cool about this moment in time for the Serbian national team and with Jokic and my hope is that this era gets to be known as the Jokic era, and it's a Serbian style of basketball and a Jokic style of basketball, and it's like Jokic's expression of Serbian basketball, which would be cool. Do you feel, Adam, as a passionate American basketball player and fan, do you feel well represented on the global stage by Zylan Cheatham losing to Mexico? Does that <laughs> capture like the American? Way. But again, I, I know, yeah, it's so weird. Man. I'm, like, I'm just being dick. I wish I could rewind the clock, man. I had an opportunity to work for USA Basketball because they're in Colorado Springs. I went to school in Colorado Springs. I think they've moved. But at the time, like right out of college, I had an opportunity to like intern that maybe it would lead to something. I wasn't ready at the time. It would never would have worked out. But part of me wonders like that life path, how different right. it would have been to really get ingrained in that and maybe feel passionate about trying to make USA Basketball something different from what it is right now. Mm. Or maybe I would just be a Nike rep. That is just like just a <laughs> nightmare of money person. off of Team USA. Yeah. Just yeah. Like that. Uh, I remember when I went there, they gave me a bunch of shoes, and I like I was already sold. Like I was like, oh man, this is great. So I, I probably at that age was very easily bought. Yeah, Last question. I sure was. Sally says, "Would you want to see the NBA International versus USA game?" Ah, uh, man, that's a that's actually an interesting. So like, I'm guessing you mean at the All Star break. U.S. versus the world. It's tough. Here's why it's tough. Because some years, it's unbalanced. Some years, you're not going to be able to have a perfect 12 guys on one side, 12 guys on the other. And would it suck if, say, Jamal Murray didn't make an all-star team because there was too many international guards and then some terrible American player, not terrible, but not, not as good American player made it or vice versa. So that's why I would say no to that. But I would admit, I do think it would be maybe good for the game if there was some kind of like world versus the U.S. type game. I think that would be an interesting concept. Oh, it would be awesome. And I wonder if pride alone would be enough to inspire competitiveness in that exhibition. Yeah. It would be so cool if it was. This would be the case, This would be the time for the case study. You've got the two best players in the world. Maybe you want to throw Steph in there, but in my opinion, it's Giannis Jokic. And then Doncic coming in hot. I mean, an international you team know, right now. Know. International, by the way, also includes Joel Embiid. Like you this also get point. to, you also get there. So who who are the five? If we're going to do somewhat positionally, they could play together. Which five players would you have represent Team USA? I don't know that you could play. I don't think you could play Giannis and Embiid, Jokic. So you're probably starting Luka, Jokic, and Giannis. Shea Gilgis Alexander is in there with Jamal Murray's probably in there somewhere. Ben Simmons maybe is in there somewhere. I mean, if he ever comes back Plays to earth, basketball. um, who else do you have? <laughs> is Franz Faulkner going to end up making my team? Um, ball. we're going to forget a whole, a whole host of people here. Victor I mean, w, Rudy, high school sensation. Rudy, Rudy Gobert is probably somewhere on that list. Um, who else? Who else? I mean, you've got all the Croatians too. You got Boyan and you got Saric w and, and Wiggins. And is Wiggins, maybe. I mean, what's what's weird is there are a lot more wings and bigs than there are guards. I don't know who your guards would be. It probably is Shea Gildas and Jamal Murray. Team USA, though, I was trying to go through this exercise recently because I think for shooting guard, you would just have pencil, penciled Harden in for the longest time. But I don't know if he still holds that spot. Steph is in there for sure. Durant's in there for sure. LeBron's in there for sure. Who's is Towns the best American center? Man, is he? He might be. Oh, they're getting cooked inside. Then they're come on, cooked. man. Are you kidding me? They're, they're gonna have a good. They're gonna. They're gonna score some points. But come on, Horford. Yeah, you might. Oh no, he's Dominican. Yeah, he's Dominican. Oh wow, you can't bring him in. Wow, <laughs> uh, this could be lopsided. This could be an interesting man. Um, anyway, that's it. So that's our last question, I believe. Yeah, that's the last one. This was a good one. We get a little weekend here. Vote. I'm going to be out for Monday, but vote wind, maybe D line going to be bringing you a recap for a winner's lounge, hopefully winner's lounge, knock on wood for the game on Monday. Then I'll be back Tuesday. Um, and we should have a good week ahead of us with all these games, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button on the way out. Don't forget that. Um, don't forget that we are a podcast as well. You can leave a rating and review. And I want to say one thing. It's a little somber to be honest with you as we get out of here. And I don't want you know, to bring anybody to, down too bad. But um, we just got news today that a good friend and a terrific writer, Jonathan Jarks, who's been having a, a basically a two-year battle with cancer, has just been put on hospice care. So he'll be, you know, unfortunately living out his last days. I just saw him in Summer League two months ago. 
Um, and I, we knew he was battling with it, but you know, looked good and, and, and looked healthy. And, you know, I just, to, he's such a great guy. He deserves mention. I mean, he really is truly a, a, a phenomenal human being and has been, you will never hear anybody say a bad word about Jonathan Charks. He was a terrific analyst as well. Really loved the game of basketball. And, um, you know, the only thing I'll say about him sort of here as, as we just got this news is that I, I'm so impressed with how brave he was through all this. I say I'm at Summer League. He didn't want to talk about anything like that. He just wanted to talk basketball. He had questions about Jokic. He had questions about the Nuggets. He just wanted to talk. And it was such a – I'll always remember that about him, that I, you know he's going through this thing. You knew that the odds were so far against him. And he just acted like it was another day. And, and it was really impressive and really encouraging. And, you know, unfortunately, we could, everybody was hoping and, and pulling one direction, but it's going to go the other direction on it. Um, and I just kind of wanted to say some words here uh, to kind of honor him because he was such a great guy. Hit that like button for us on the way out, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.